a.m. I'd like to welcome everybody to the work session for July the 15th. Um, public comment, Ellen. Yes, please. Ryan Jones. Ryan Jones. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Brad. Gentlemen, all six of us could be somewhere else, making more money, dealing a lot less hassle. But each one of us put our hand on the Bible, raised our right hand, to swear to defend the Constitution and protect the citizens of this community. As commissioners, you're constitutionally responsible for the roads and animal control, but morally responsible for the protection of the 114,000 people who live here. Now, in some of our conversations about this request to be included in the line item budget, um, it's been talked to me about the fact that this is my problem as a state problem, but it's not. It's a limestone county issue. As citizens in our communities, they sit around their kitchen tables at church and at work. They're not worried about Montgomery. They're worried about what affects them and their families. They're worried about much more about their safety and their well-being. Public safety is more important than libraries, tourism, and most of the entities that are going to come before you to ask for money. Public safety comes first. If we're not safe in our community, then it doesn't matter what we spend on anything else. The quality of life is going to go down. I've asked for $263,924.50 for two victim service officers and one assistant DA. I implore you, as your district attorney, that if you care about the citizens of this community, make us a line item. Rip that Band-Aid off. I know it's going to be tough. I know the first time we do it, it's going to sting. But let's rip that Band-Aid off and let's make it a line item so whoever is my successor is on down the road can count on this money to serve the citizens of this community. If you don't care about the citizens, then don't do it. But that's going to send an awfully loud message to the community that you don't care. And I, I, we need you. The victims need you. I need you. Everybody in this county needs you because we've done as everything we can to offset this loss. And it's that simple. And so I'm asking for the appropriation to be included in the general fund budget for $263,924.50. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Next. Terry Richardson. Terry, how are you doing this morning? Great to see you this morning. Okay. I'm just a little shorter than Brian. <laughs> um, Thank you so much for your past support of Athens Main Street. You'll be able to read about all the details in your packet of um, our financial position, which is excellent, and how we use our money will be detailed and reviewed in our annual report, which you'll also get a copy of. I'd like to use the next few minutes to talk about your return on investment with Athens Main Street. The revitalization of the square is paying great dividends with increased sales down there. Our downtown events, as Fridays After Five, for example, have grown exponentially, attracting 3,000 to 4,000 people with each event. This means the majority of those people get in their cars and probably stop by a gas station on their way down to downtown. When they get here, they have a great time. They see all the new restaurants, all the things, the shops, things to do, and they come back and again and again, and they stop back by those um, gas stations and fill up yet again. We are in that way impacting positively the bottom line. Another way you're seeing your investment on, in Athens Main Street payoff is the renovation of the farmers market. You know we've seen record crowds again this year and record number of, of vendors. That's all exactly what we hope for. And the renovation of the site, your property, has been instrumental in creating kind of a mini renaissance at that five, five points area. We've got the new irons and ales there. We've got two new restaurants coming in that'll be announced soon there. We have had drainage improvements, sidewalk improvements, the renovation of the pocket park. It's all made that area very vibrant and inviting. But in terms of real dollars, at the end of phase three, which has begun, Athens Main Street will have invested $250,000 gifted by individuals and businesses, and $350,000 in grants from
for a total of $600,000 toward the renovation of that site. That $600,000 does not reflect the in-kind uh, donations by the Limestone County Commission, the City of Athens, Grayson Carter & Son, Morrell Engineering, Amble Studios, Grayson Bailey, Outdoor Elegance, and a ton of other people that have <coughs> donated their time and talent to that effort. So inclusive of in-kind, we estimate over $800,000 will be spent on that site to renovate that site. I hope I've made the case that your investment in Athens Main Street is paying off both in quality of life and in real dollars. We're asking you please to continue to fund, uh, level fund us at 18,000, but we could use some more if you got any around. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Terry. Thank you, ma'am. I didn't want you reading my head. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Chloe Wilson. Chloe, how are you doing today? Good. How are y'all? Doing great. Hey, Chloe. Good morning. My name is Chloe Wilson, and I'm the Limestone County Extension Coordinator, otherwise known as the CEC. I would first like to extend my gratitude to all of you for our continued partnership with the Limestone County Commissioners. Traditionally, county commissions have encouraged and supported outreach initiatives since Extension's inception throughout the state of Alabama. I'm here today on behalf of the Limestone County Extension Office to request additional funding of the upcoming fiscal year. This request of $20,000 would go to our general budget and aid in critical staffing needs for our county programs as well as enhancing program support. Limestone County Extension seeks to transform lives by providing science-based information, practical solutions, and meaningful experiences for the residents of Limestone County. Examples of how Extension is carrying out this mission in Limestone County are through programs such as 4-H, Limestone County Master Gardeners, our financial literacy programs, um, soil samples, vaping prevention, pond testing, diabetes education, adult cooking and food preservation classes, parenting classes, community development programs, agriculture field days, home visits, and so much more. Through all of this, we teach our community ways to better their homes, farm, people, and our workplaces. With the rapid growth in Limestone County has come the swift growth of some of our most sought after programs in Extension, 4-H especially. Many families that are moving to this area have participated in 4-H in other states or other counties, and they're eager to get their children involved and plugged in in all that 4-H has to offer. This program is currently at capacity, which has significantly limited our ability to provide the services in the community. This funding would help us provide leadership and life skills to students in Limestone County, as well as STEM opportunities and natural resources and agricultural education. I've been working diligently to bring new programs and opportunities to the people of Limestone County since I began in this coordinator role in November of 2023. In the next few months, you'll see extension agents and master gardeners providing more programs to your senior centers, cooking classes with the Birdie Thornton Center, and an extension day at the Athens Farmers Market to help our customers with any of their gardening issues. Auburn University is currently investing $367,831 in personnel cost, programming, and travel expenses for the 16 extension agents that cover Limestone County. However, to fully meet the needs of our community and offer the most comprehensive programs, we do need additional funding. I'm requesting your partnership to bridge this gap and ensure quality programming for the, counties, or for the residents of Limestone County. Limestone County Extension is dedicated to providing its residents, notably our youth population, with transformative life experiences and opportunities that are going to pave the road to success, not only for our youth, but ultimately for the future of Limestone County. I thank you so much for this opportunity to speak to you this morning, and I hope that you choose to see us as a worthy cause to invest in. And I've given you some packets with our 2023 county highlights. Um, there's 4-H, all the different things that we've been doing in the community, so you can take a look and let me know if you have any questions. Thank you, Chloe. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Anna Carr. How are you doing this morning, Anna? Good morning. Um, I've 
turned in my packet and y'all will I think get a copy of that. Um, I am with the Athens Limestone County Family Resource Center. I am the program manager there. Um, and I just want to say we are grateful and appreciative of the support we've had um, and look forward to that for years to come. We are asking for an increase to $25,000 this year. We are asking this uh, due to the expansion of our services. We have brought uh, Dolly Parton Imagination Library. We're now serving all zip codes in Limestone County. We're currently, I think even today, it's about 1,180 children ha are receiving books and I still have some to implement. We're still serving the community through our family assistance program, uh, our family solutions, where we are helping with rent and utilities for people um, who are struggling. We do budgeting classes with them. We make sure that they understand where they're struggling and how to get back on uh, track. Our One of our bigger programs we've grown this year is our workforce development program. We have um, served, currently we're serving 100 individuals through that program, helping them find jobs, helping them get their resume, helping them do job skills, get them trade. So we're connecting them with Calhoun Community College to get all of that so that they can be more self-sufficient um, and kind of get their families back on track. Of course, we still have our ramp program where we're building ramps for people completely free who are wheelchair bound or walker bound where they can't get in and out of their houses. So that is continuing. And then we have um, brought basically three new programs to the Limestone County children. So we are serving Limestone County children who are in Limestone County schools and Athens City Schools through SMILE, Project SMILE, which helps with their emotions and feelings and trying to figure out how they're, what they're feeling and why they're feeling and teaching them skills to get back to their peaceful spot, as we call it, um, where they can self-regulate. And that's all done uh, pulling them out of class and we see those behaviors in the classroom. We also have Game Changers, which is for 6th through 12th graders who are struggling with self-esteem. So we talk about their self-esteem. We talk about um, how things affect us. Uh, that was done just through Renaissance, uh, Athens Renaissance. And then we've also brought back or brought in FACT, which is Family Assistance Through Community Ties. That is also for Athens City and Limestone County schools. Any child or any family who's involved in the schools are eligible. Um, no income base, nothing that way. It is just they may be struggling with uh, mom, dad lost their job so we can connect with them, get them into workforce to get them a job because anything that kids are struggling with at school, they're going to, or at home, they're going to come to school and they're not going to be prepared so it's helping them get back on track. So we are now serving uh, birth to elderly in our, uh, with all of our services that we have. So we just, uh, we, again, we appreciate and um, we have grown so much. We have four staff, or four full-time staff members, two part-time, and then we're also using TARCOG for one of our staff members. So thank you so much. Thank you, Hannah. Thank you. Rhonda Andrews. Rhonda Andrews, learn to read. How you doing, Miss Andrews? How are y'all doing? Doing good. Good. Um, I want to thank the Limestone County Commissioner, for, uh, Commissioner and Commission for providing for us for the last several years, especially for the support for the adult program. Most of the grantee, grantors like to um, sponsor the, the children's program, but in helping the adults, you're also helping the children because their parents need to know how to read and they need to know how to function in today's society. Uh, especially the ESL programs, they need to know English so they can talk to the teachers. Our basic program has been low um, in number, but mighty in quality. We have two students right now, one of them is going to Calhoun Community College to get her high school diploma first, and then she wants to go on and go to college there also and take courses there. She's very excited. She actually was our number one student many years ago, and she dropped out of the program. She had Pat Waybright. I don't know if y'all remember Jim Waybright from Steelcase, but it was his wife and tutored her, and she did really, really well, but she didn't go on as much as she wants to. Now she has a mental health counselor that she can go and talk to people in the mental health field. She doesn't mind sharing her story. She's just really advanced a lot. So again, the number is low, but there are still people out there that need us. I have two tomorrow that need to be evaluated and sign up in the program. I'm wearing two hats right now. I'm wearing the uh, director's hat and I'm also wearing the computer labs hat. 
not doing as well as I should be doing. But that's going to change as of Thursday. We have a new director coming in that will be taking my place. Um, and I will move over into the computer lab. Please note that I do not think this is a step down. I will be working more with the students. And I'm really looking forward to that. Uh, our ESL program now has grown in leaps and bounds. We really need this money this time, especially for the books. The materials have doubled in price. Um, we served 97 ESL students within our last, um, our last calendar year. Um, we have many coming in, yes, mostly Hispanic, but the Haitians are coming into the country. They have political asylum. A lot of them have actually had uh, education. Some of them are nurses. I've had two or three to come through. They don't want to be here. They're having to be here. They have political asylum, but they want to work. They want to be a part of the community. And I think people maybe sometimes don't think about that. The ESL students are working here. They're shopping locally. They have their children in school. The children have to be translators sometime for mom and dad. Um, I was very uh, pleased that West Limestone High School asked us to come out for a uh, resource night. Um, primarily for Hispanics that night. Of course, it was a night that we had bad weather. Imagine that. Um, and the number was low, but it was wonderful because I took one of our ESL students with me and she translated for me because un poquito espanol. Um, and so it was wonderful because she could ask them questions and we could get them, you know, get them our information and help. So we, we, we enjoy going into the school systems and doing this and telling about our program. We're asking for $7,500 this year. We're having to sit out from steel case from this year because you sit out once every four years. Um, our fundraiser community has been very supportive, but we only had six teams. We didn't make quite as much as we would have liked. So we really need this, this, this 7,500, if at all possible. And again, thank you so much for all you've done for us. Thank you, Ron. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. You don't just hand them here, I have to do them. Thank you, Rhonda. Good to see you. Curtis Turner. I saw a murder. Yeah, there he is. How you doing this morning, Mr. Turner? Oh, I'm pretty good. I'm here again today to talk about the library and our children. At the last commission meeting, I was assaulted by three people. I, le I felt like I was in imminent danger when one of the men made an aggressive motion towards me. His hand came within one inch of hitting me. It should be obvious that the individuals who are attacking the libraries don't care about the individual growth and development of our children. Children are knowledge magnets when they are given the opportunity to explore and learn. Knowledge at all stages and all ages is what will keep our children safe. <clears throat> to burn books, to ban books, and to move books are synonymous. The intent of all three is to limit and to make acquiring knowledge difficult. It is up to the body to protect, it is up to this body to protect the sanctity of our libraries and the lives of our children. I am asking you to pull back the cloak of fascism and stop the burning of books. When children need answers to questions and they are condemned or ridiculed by their parents or other adults, they either get misinformed by their peers or they can get the information from the library. Approximately 2 million adolescents attempt suicide each year. Among U.S. pediatric deaths, more than 25% are by suicide. It is the second leading cause of death for children of ages 10 to 24, Romeo and Juliet. Now there is a push in the Alabama legislature to arrest librarians if a child check out a Bible. The librarian is now the official babysitter for neglected and abused children. The legislators' efforts uh, would be better served if they required parents to be within no more than five feet 
from their children at a time or they would be arrested. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Turner. Thank you. Sam Novosol. Good morning, Sam. How are you doing? Well, sir. Good thing is I'm not here to ask for money. <laughs> Simply put, uh, Hamlin Homes filled in that swamp on the northeast corner of uh, northeast corner of Ennis. We've been here before. It's going to flood this winter. It's going to flood out. We got new neighbors. Um, he put a one inch or a one foot pipe about thirty feet, and that's not. That's it was. A, well, how do I say this? It was a foot underwater this winter, and it's six and a half acres, and he just filled it in. Where's that water going to go? A one foot pipe ain't gonna do it. On top of that, he drove 25 ton trucks down Ennis at 40 miles per hour for a month straight, eight hours a day, and buckled the road. Why does he get to push those costs on the taxpayer? He broke the road, he fixed it. Road's been there since 1984, haven't had an issue. Hamlet Holmes gets involved in something on the road, it's busted. Um, let's see here. So with the water issue, I, I, I contact a lawyer. I cannot sue him because he's not directly affecting my property. They told me to sue you guys for blocking access when the water goes over the road. So if that's what it comes to this winter, so be it. The simple solution is to have him dig two, he's a, he's a builder, right? So he has to follow the regulations. The simple solution is have him put two retention ponds in there and drain them correctly. I, I don't know why we have to go over this again and again until someone's lives are affected or until we have to sue each other. It's, it's simple math. You guys are here to protect people's private property. Let's get to it, okay? Any questions? Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank, thank, you. thank you for coming. No further comments. No further comments. <clears throat> well, thank everybody for coming today. Thank everybody for the comments. With that, we'll move on to the work session. Um, uh, first on the agenda today, we'll have minutes from July the 1st to 2024. Do we have any discussion with the minutes? No discussion with the minutes, so we'll move on to claims. We have claims in the amount of $729,589.97. Do we have any um, issue with any claim being paid or anything like that? Any discussion with the claims? All right. Conflicts of interest. Anybody got any conflicts of interest or anything coming from the commission body today? If everybody's silence, so I'll take that as a no. Um, resolutions and orders. Good morning, Dion. How are you doing? Um, <laughs> resolutions and orders. Does do we have anybody have any resolution? We have none of that today. So no, sir. All right. I done got confused there. Dion done distracted me. <laughs> Very sorry, we got two Dion's in the room, and we got two today. That's unusual, so we got two Dion's. Um, contracts, agreements, and MOUs and grants. Um, number one will be to approve MOU with Heritage Health Solutions for the county to participate in the cost reduction program for inmate medical claims. And uh, I know that um, the sheriff and the inmate medical and all, they've been working hard with this, and I know Ellen has too, and maybe we can get all this right here, some of these costs. Down. Anybody got any discussion with that? All right. Uh, number two will be to approve to apply for the FY24 COPS Technical Equipment Program and the Intentional Grant for the Sheriff's Department, and this is for the amount of $425,000 with no county match. Does anybody have any discussion with that? Well, no budget revisions. Merchant purchase, we have none. Board appointments, award of bids, we have none. And the other way, um, personnel policy and staffing action. We have four items today. First one will be to approve to hire um, Corey Ayers as a corrections officer, and this will be effective the 22nd um, of 2024, pending a drug screen. Anybody got discussion with him? Number two will be to approve to change the staffing plan and the license commission to reflect seven tag and title clerks and five senior tag and title clerks. Anybody got a discussion with that? All right, number three will be to promote Lori Crow from the help desk clerk to the tag title clerk in the license commission office and this will be effective the 15th of 2024. Anybody got a discussion with her? And number four will be to approve to hire um, Marjorie Diaz as a help desk um, in the license commission office effective 
the, <coughs> the 15th of 2024. Anybody got a discussion with that? All right, married increases. We have a few listed below. Anybody got a discussion with that? And the engineers report. This is the first time I believe in history we don't have a we, sub. We had one other time. <laughs> and I, you know, I mean, so we do not have a subdivision on here today. But Mark, go ahead. Uh, the only thing that I have is just kind of an update on where Paving Crew is. Um, they're working on Cross Key uh, in front of the contractor. Contractor's going to be out there to um, to put the wearing surface and shoulders down. Um, then we will be moving to District One. Um, we expect to be done with Cross Key and moving to District, moving to District One tomorrow. So, um, we'll be going up there to work on uh, uh, the remainder of his list. So, and then I believe it, I believe we're back to District Three, District Four, um, for to finish out the list. It's our expectation that we should be um, on schedule finishing up our main paving, mainline paving projects, uh, middle of August, and in a position to, to uh, get on the patching and things like that, especially that patching that was done. That was, it's necessary because of the freeze damage that we had. Um, so we should be, um, first part of August, middle of August, we should be finishing up with everything and getting to, um, getting to that patching. That's just kind of my update because I had to have something to say today. <laughs> uh, question mark. Uh, apparently, he has he put permanent piping under that on Ennis Road? Are you aware no, of that? I'm supposed to have. I've had a conversation um, uh, with Hamlin Homes, and that was supposed to have just been temporary to get in and out. Um, that, was, I will, that was my understanding. Yeah, I will. I will go out there and verify, and, and I'll, I'll have a I'll have a discussion uh, with Hamlin Homes about about it, just to make sure that we're all on the same page there. Now he can pipe it, but you need to do the sizing. You would have it, to correct? size it. Yes, he can. He can. Uh, and just like anybody else, they can have a pipe to their um, uh, in in the ditch, have access to their property. But um, but we we try to size those appropriately for the, the stormwater flow that would come through there. So um, so like I said, I, anything he put in there. It's supposed to be temporary just so that he has access um, until I think his plan is to sell that and then the, the then the property owner from there they would they would be able to put the pipe wherever in the ditch that they want their access to be but um, so I, I think it's his, it's his intention for that to just be temporary because we know what happens if it's right. not right Thank you, but sir. I'll, I'll go out there this week and, and look everything over and make sure that all the ditches and everything that, that were put in there to drain it the last time that he hasn't affected those um, in any negative way. Anybody got else thing for Mark? Mark, you're getting off a lot today. Thank you. All right. One th Okie dokie. Moving on. Nobody has anything else for Mark. Other business. We have one budget revision for District 3. Um, anybody got any discussion with the budget revision? All righty. No discussion with that. Anybody else got any other business before we recess? Or we have no executive session, so we will recess for 15 minutes, which I use my Ellen Handy Dandy thing here will be 943. <laughs> No, we nine forty three. We got the we got the we got the official <laughs> Ellen Handy Dandy cheat sheet up here. <laughs> huh? It is handy. That is handier than a pocket on a shirt. <laughs> Two whole clue cards. Up now, now that's handy. Y'all proud of me? I, that oh, is handy.